Washed. Retired. What happens when you take two former Apex Pros, put them in front of a camera with a microphone and a green screen? We are live from Sweden here. We are not on a green screen. Dude, fucking cut the VOD, guys. Cut the VOD. Four shots going down. Knock gets knocked. Skittle Cakes, the last one alive. Can he do it? Some more shots going down. He's going to get the KP for his team. And it won't be too scenario. Is he going to get the armor stop? He does. And is he going to win it for his team? Can he do it? The armor stop coming out from Skittles. And it's going to be a one. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Skittles. We are live from Raleigh, North Carolina. This is not a green screen. That guy is that shredded. I mean, he is that sick. Like, he is that chill. Look at him. I mean, oh my goodness. If you are in Raleigh and you want to come watch, stand here, hang out, vibe. You could just don't get me banned on Twitch. Do not show you're not sorry. But you can come behind a Millie Rock. You can't do that. Fuck TSM. I'm interested to see if on game day, are we going to see some Revenant gameplay? I hope to God no. The early bubble from Obli though, and this actually might cost him. Oh my God! Insane play by Perko with the grenades and the wingman shot. Yuki going down, more grenades going on, and holy shit! Listen, I think one thing that people underestimate about me yeah. is you might have bigger arms than me. Way bigger. You might have a bigger chest than me. Way bigger chest. But I have a bigger heart. That means nothing, Greek, when I can literally pick you up and throw you. But they do have a team on the left side, so they Good could get Oh my god, the spray transfer was disgusting, dude. Looking like me in my prime. You are horrible. But we have a, this is a green screen. Come here, listen, chat. This is not a green screen. These guys are all fucking liars. They are TSM fans at heart. To make sure he can still Oh, win. and they get laid Oh on. my god, and he collaterals! He collaterals with the Kramer no scope, and they're gonna get the wife on the GW. Oh, oh my, my god. god! Did you just type to the admins, I'm losing my mind? I am. You just typed in the professional Discord with all the admins running the show. I'm losing my mind. Yeah, but I hit him with a heart. <laughs> I've known these guys for years, and I wouldn't even say. It's on I'm, my, I'm it's on my yeah, Discord! It's not... The duo of Pulprex is still alive. These guys are phenomenal, man. You guys need to show love to these dudes. They are still alive, the duo. That is absolutely insane, bro. With 13 squads, and they're living. Right. Show you TSM. TSM is not fighting. You guys keep saying we need TSM. You need energy. Guess what? They're not doing anything! Shut up! Energy is looking, though, with SDK here. Big shout out to both Wig and Greek for giving me some of their time and interviewing for this video. If you want to check out our full conversation, and it was absolutely hilarious, I sadly couldn't include like 95% of it in this video. But if you want to check out the full conversation, go to the link in the description to check out my Patreon. Before the B stream, Nicewig was simply one of the few controller players grinding Apex ranked whose life was forever changed by a Twitch raid from the biggest Apex streamer at the time, Dizzy. I'm playing with Dizzy! I'm playing with Dizzy! I'm playing with Dizzy! What the fuck? It's Dizzy! It's Dizzy! What is going on? Yo guys! Thank you so much for being here, man! I'm freaking out! I'm freaking out! I'm the number one controller player on PC! Much love, guys! I, I, guys, you don't understand, man. I've been grinding the fuck out of this game. I've been streaming like 14 hours a day, 15 hours a day, man. Tank! Whoa! What? 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 No! No way he just hosted me, bro. There's no way he just hosted me, dude. There's no way I have 10,000 viewers right now, dude. Nah, this is a dream, dude. This is 100% a dream. There's no way this is real, dude. I'm dreaming. I've been... That's all I want, man. That's all I really wanted to do is stream, dude. Nah, this is my fucking... This all I want to do is just talk to people and have fun, man. What's going on, bro? Thank you so much, Dizzy. Thank you, dude. Like, thank you so much. What the hell, bro? This is crazy, man. This is actually the craziest moment of my life, dude. Oh, what the hell, dude? I just, dude, I just, I just want to reach out to like thousands of people a day, bro, and help some people and have fun, dude. Thank you guys so much, man. Like, are you kidding me, bro? I don't deserve this, dude. I don't deserve this, man. What the hell, dude? I just, dude, the soul, bro. 
If only you guys knew, man. Just thank you so much, everybody. And unbeknownst to this new audience that had just discovered him, he was but a week away from quitting streaming and going back and finding a full-time job. I was a trainer for a while, and then I get fired from my job, or I quit. My boss, like came after me. I was like 18, 19. I was working really long hours and he was like kind of just taking advantage of a kid that wanted to make money. So I quit, told my mom about it. And my mom was like, don't tell your dad. I was like, okay, I didn't tell my dad. So I quit and I was like, listen, I'm not going to get another job uh, for like a whole month. I'm going to go and I'm a stream. Like, I, I don't know what's telling me to do this, bro, but like, I'm going to go stream if it works out uh, in like a month, then I'm gonna keep doing it for making money. He's like, if not, then I'll go get a job at like, I don't know, fucking crunch fitness and just work as a personal trainer there. Cause it was a cool, cool gig. Instead, he was able to use this new attention to launch himself into the apex scene based on not only his unashamed and genuine personality, but also at the time being one of the only controller players in apex, which back then was viewed as a large disadvantage in these early days of apex behind the scenes, EA had begun the process of creating a competitive circuit, prompting or to begin to look for talent to compete under their banner. I got signed to CLG, bro. CLG signed me literally with zero competitive experience in any video game ever. They're like, yeah, we just want you. And I was like, okay, that's fine. They're like, pick your team. And I was like, you sure about that? So I picked Noko and that was a weird decision, but then we, we, we played pretty well. There you go. I just literally chose Noko. We played with Lyric as well, who was really good. Uh, that was when we were on CLG. We played Noko Lyric and we fucking did horrible. Lyric quit a week literally a week till X Games. He practiced him for two months. He quit a week before X Games. We, we got Mattis instead. And with this, Wig became the first ever controller player signed to a tier one orc, teaming up with Madness and Noko. They were eventually able to make it to the finals lobby at the preseason invitational, but eventually after about six months together, the team disbanded. Wig jumped around trying to find his next team, which ultimately led to Yeet Squad, where he accomplished the peak moment of his competitive career, beating the feared complexity, the all-star roster of Rogue, and even topping Prime TSM. I'm here, I'm here, you're good. Let's go! 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 Let's competitive apex. As Greek and his friends began grinding ranked, they eventually were able to reach the upper echelons of the Predator rank, where they finally were granted access to the top 50 discord created by JMO, formerly known as PvP. And in this discord, our duo would meet for the first time. I had just gotten invited into the top 50 discord uh, after grinding with, you know, my, my comp teammates. And there was like one day where a wig and a prize put an LF1 in there and i had responded and they were like yeah sure bro like run it whatever so we hop in there we have like a good rank session uh then they're like yo like we need one again anyway like do you want to run it back i was like hell yeah let's do it so then we played again had another good one and then we ended up making a group chat uh for just like meeting up and, and ranking or whatever and i just kind of became their third at the time because they were normally running with frex right and Frex is like notorious for always taking off KC splits. And he would never ever play ranked on KC splits. So coincidentally enough, it was a KC split where I had like first ran with them and they were just always LF1 because Frex was just gone. So I can kind of thank Frex for our friendship growing because if he never took that KC split off, I never would have just met them and like ranked with them all the time. And we've been good friends ever since. But although they were becoming friends, their paths were going in separate directions. Greek was beginning his journey through the competitive scene, competing through the various winter circuits, and eventually qualifying to play in the 2021 ALGS Online Championship. This effort secured him a spot on the Orc Charlotte Phoenix as he began to compete in Pro League. Meanwhile, for Wig, after CLG, he had the variety of teams, but was slowly losing his love for competing. But he still loved the competitive Apex scene. And this put Wig in a spot that many pros eventually reach. Either he continues the grind, looking for a new team, trying to make his way back to the top, or he takes a risk and tries something new and unknown. And so Wig decided if he wasn't gonna play competitive Apex, well then he might as well watch it. And after deciding to watch Party, an opportunity presented itself. 
Competitive Apex, although technically a few years old by this point, had just recently begun what was the Apex Legends Global Series, and as it was growing, they began a push to get the community much more involved. This could be seen with the likes of Girl casting, guest appearances from Hodzik, Nocturnal, Raven, and more. But crucially, they also saw the value in watch parties. Watch parties as a concept was not new, it is a form of entertainment for competitive events across esports that has existed for a long time, and so during the online ALGS winter circuit number three, Nicewig was granted an opportunity that would set him on a path he never expected possible. When I first started, I got hired to host for the B-Stream, funny enough. No one, no one really knows this, but I got hired by EA to, they paid me to literally watch the second lobby going on for an ALGS, right? And by the way, just in yep. general, bro, you yep. making your casting debut live right now, this is, the, <laughs> this is one of those dope moments. How does it feel to be cast, man? How are you Dude, doing so far? Honestly, man, I would be here a lot more, doing a lot more things. I think just sometimes I can't control my language and I get way <laughs> too I get way too excited. And if I start, I'll start cursing up a storm or also doing this and that. And for me, if I did that live, I would feel terrible. I, I really went in with the intent after that B stream being like, damn, EA like wants to do something with me. Maybe I should just keep doing this no matter what viewership I get. Like, I might not be the top dog right now, but like 3,000 viewers, still fucking great. I didn't get 3,000 viewers competing back then. So I was like, I'm getting more viewers now when I'm watch partying, why would I stop this? This is, I'm making myself a living. I can afford my rent, I can afford bills. Like, who knows where this can go? So I have followed my gut, bro, like, four times in my life with certain really, really big life-changing decisions. And my gut's always been right. And something was telling me, bro, quit pro play. Quit fucking trying to be make something of yourself that you're not going to be. Understand like your space and who the fuck you can be in other ways and keep streaming this watch party, bro. Like who knows what's going to happen. And after I got signed by EA for that B stream, I was like, yeah, I got to keep going. So I watch partied everything. But this watch party, while building connections with EA, was big because over the course of the next year, Nicewig was given more and more opportunities to host these official ALGS watch parties. And during this time, Wig got signed to 100 Thieves as a content creator, meaning he was headed to the big city of LA. But who wants to move alone? So he took his rank squad of a prize and Greek, and they decided to all make the journey together, moving in as roommates. Wig was like, yo, do you want to be roommates? And I was like, hell yeah. Like, when are you thinking? He's like, well, I actually have to like have an answer and have an apartment by like two weeks. And I was like, man, I can't wait to talk to my foreign parents about how I want to move across the country and live with two people that I play video games with that I met over the internet. I can't wait for my mom to hear this one. And shortly after came Wig's biggest watch party yet, the 2021 ALGS Online Championship, where of course his roommate Greek was once again competing. Knocked, almost gonna go down here. Kodagami one shot, they're gonna look at this. Stick coming up, no audio on anyone. Stick with the two kills. Zach Mays are getting a knock on the Cody. The full kill coming out from Greek. They need to get this KP. This is huge for the homies. And three KP, who cares if he plays top five? It doesn't matter. You need this KP. Zach does have the Kramer, so he's a little bit dangerous right now. The 145 coming out from Greek, and the controller Eva coming out. Huge for Greek and company. And the zone is closing, but they still have time. Top seven with a bunch of KP for the Wally catchers. Showing that these boys want to be signed they want to play someone pay attention to how good they are after this kangarna is crowned of the champions and the first official year of the apex legends global series was complete and heading into year two there were sweeping changes the broadcast had improvements including the command center where viewers at home could watch every single team's pov Greek, of course, was still competing in Pro League at this point with Charlotte Phoenix, while Wig was playing with a prize and it's Timmy under Team Sheesh. Team Sheesh eventually falls apart mid-split, once again seeing Wig choosing to watch party. And with Wig and Greek as roommates now, during watch parties, Greek would occasionally join the stream when he wasn't playing himself, literally sitting right next to Wig, oftentimes with the map stream open on a laptop to help find fights. But heading into split two of year two, EA had something cooking behind the scenes. All that time that Wig was building relationships with EA was about to pay off in a massive way. For the first time since 2019, the Apex Legends competitive scene would be returning to LAN, and the schedule was condensed in a way that forced two lobbies to play simultaneously. This meant that EA needed a secondary broadcast to show the lobby that wasn't occurring on the main stage. And here is how everything breaks down even further. You'll notice a secondary stream we have here. 
Well, that is being done by the incredible nice wig, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Speaking of that secondary stream, we got to make mention there is the man, the myth, the legend himself. He is within a stone's throw of this desk, and we are fans, certainly. We try to get him to say hi, but you know, he's he's too cool for us, Bardock. He's ubing us fine. from up above. And with that, the B stream was born. But Wig knew that in order to create the best possible show he could, he couldn't do it alone. And so he asked the only person he would want with him in this moment, Greek. We didn't even come up with this idea. No one knows that. We didn't come up with the B stream going to Sweden. We got, I got a call from Shaheen and he was like, bro, like, what do you think about you and you watch partying in Sweden? I was like, yeah. He was like, bring whoever you want. And I was like, uh, obviously gonna bring Greek, no doubt. So I got Greek in and then there you go. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, they're the ones that came up with the vision before we did, and they took a shot on us. Me and him have never casted a game before. Bro, your viewership's actually fucking goaded. Like, this is something that the people love. Let's invest more in the people and you guys to give what the viewers want. And that, to me, is just something I have to always tip my hat to, because without them, Shaheen doing that, Joseph, and other Jasmine from Lenovo now on fucking EA, like, without them just really dedicating, like, their their commitment to us, we would probably not be here doing this right now at a level we are. While most other esports do another official broadcast for their secondary streams, the B stream was just two friends with a passion for the game, having fun, while being able to provide insights as they were both able to compete at the professional level themselves. And the B stream was a massive success as the community outpouring of love was insane. The B stream returned for the Raleigh ALGS championship and continued to push to new heights, peaking at over 70,000 viewers. You have one job if you are a fan here at the event. Do not show sack behind my stream and get me banned on Twitch. You hear me, Greek? I goes for you too. For Wig, it was clear that watch partying was going to fully take over his content as his love for competing had been fading for some time. Heading into year three, he was going to give it his all. And with Greek, seeing all the success the B stream had, it was time for him to make a decision as well. Going into year three, he could continue to try pursue being a pro or go all in on watch parties and content creation. I was trying to qual for the LAN in, what was it, Sweden? and I didn't make it. And so I got the opportunity to watch party at Sweden, did that, and then we came back and I tried to play in the POQs for Raleigh and didn't make that. And then I was like, all right, well, hmm, I still get to go to the lands. I have way more fun. I don't have to compete and I could potentially get paid doing this and pursue content creation. And I mean, 100%, I'd be lying to you if I said that, like, Wig didn't fully convince me to do it. I wanted to continue, like, trying comp, and Wig was like, bro, you're wasting your time. Your team is ass. Bro, and then I just started I... watch partying with him, like, in his room. Bro, I would playing. watch Greek. Dude, I would be watch partying, and Greek was in the room next to me. I listened to Greek go, fuck, man. And every time he died, bro, he would go to the kitchen and open the fridge, bro, and just look for something to eat. There'd never be anything there. He'd come back in his room. I'd be like, I I'd walk out, bro, and he'd walk out again. I'd be like, bro, you guys are ass. I was like, you. I, I would be telling him, like, mid-tournament, like, you need to quit. You guys, look how miserable you are, bro. Like, you, he'd get all off, bro, and he'd be so miserable that he'd be just ordering just insane food, bro, to, like, cope with, like, the fucking sadness. Here's the funniest one. <laughs> is it's literally game five out of six right like we're going into the last one and my team dies early i walk out after malding right wig walks out because he heard me right we're about to go into that last game wig fist bumps me and goes i'll see you at land anyway <laughs> So Greek chooses to go the content creator route, but unlike the past, he and Wig weren't going to just settle for simply streaming match days and lands from North America, because it is called the Apex Legends Global Series for a reason. So Wig and Greek started to dominate the watch party scene, watching all five regions, match days, scrims, everything. And all while pulling thousands of viewers every single day, introducing them to new teams, players, playstyles, and more. The land started up again with like eight pack north eight pack south greek was like bro we should watch everything and i was like really i was like do you think we should we and he was like yeah why the fuck would we not and i was like bro that's so true and that's when me and greek bro squad streamed 
hopped on and watched partied almost every fucking region for a long time. And that's, I think, when the B stream takeover like really started. That's when it skyrocketed. For me, it was it was like the realization after Sweden. Like Sweden was like, you know, I think we did good for our first time, but it was like it was that that like realization of when I would try to cast and there was like players that I didn't know their name what team they were on what region they were from and we got back as a collective and we were just like bro you know they're giving us this platform to be able to like put on for the esport and like show everybody what it's about and where everybody's from and, and shit like that and we're doing players such a disservice by not knowing like what region they're from and what team they're on so we're like that stops here like we're gonna start watching everything and even before the lands, if there's like some regions that we can't get, we're at least going to touch over and know like every pronunciation of someone's name to, you know, where they're from, what language they speak, what region they compete in. And we, we wanted to make sure that we were the most knowledgeable, at least of like above all. Wig and Greek were quickly becoming the main source of competitive Apex content because every time you want to watch, they were always there live. And EA recognized the impact that they were having and decided to bring them back for year three. The B stream returned for the split one playoffs, split two playoffs and champs, improving every single time. With the split one playoffs, it was clear all that time spent studying other regions was paying off as their knowledge had gone to another level. And during split two, they take the content even further, adding the wide swing, allowing for fans to see all their favorite players in a panel style podcast. And then with the split two playoffs, they were put to the test once again. Although they were still the B stream by name, there was no longer a lobby that would be running off of the main stage simultaneously. The LAN was scheduled in a way that allowed for every single lobby to be played on the main stage. And so the B stream became simply an alternative way to watch all the games. And with this, they finally had the setup moved down next to all the players, allowing for some more great moments. And then with the championship, it was clear that everything was coming together as their story storytelling had reached the same heights as their humor and casting. But it would not be a video of mine without a little bit of insight into how they do what they do. How is the B-Stream ran? How do they have such great chemistry? And how do they rarely miss fights? Usually Wig has the main monitor and then I'm on the side monitor, but we're both obviously like observing. And so I kind of just have the map up and I'm kind of just like keeping mental notes of what teams are going to either be forced to rotate on his own clothes, who's gonna be contesting, and who's gonna potentially like run into each other, whether it's, you know, a fight in a building or his own clothes. And like, he takes up like a majority of like, the active casting is what I call it. Like exactly what we are doing like in the moment. And he kind of pushes through that because he knows that I'm like always looking for the next thing to switch to. So that like when I kind of drop off what I'm saying to look to the next thing, he just kind of carries it forward. But yeah, basically Greek has like the most important job. He just sits on the map and looks for fights and stuff like that. Then I have to do it. But I don't think people realize how hard it is. Like I'm not going to sit here and complain, but like what we do is, is tough. There's for like AOGS broadcast, bro. They have like 12 people doing what we do for two. You know what I mean? to this to 60,000 50,000 people we're doing what 12 people do we're doing a 10 15 person job with just two people and two PCs when we first did Sweden we had we had one computer only showing so it's just my computer that would show Greek's computer had no capture at all so whatever Greek was watching on a stream I couldn't press a button on the stream deck to go to his monitor I had yeah. to literally go to my map look at him then go to where the fight is and click it etc like Greek now with the way that they set us up thankfully is Greek now can watch a fight breaking out somewhere else. And once the fight starts, I press a button on the stream deck and it goes to his monitor. And then I look for another fight that's happening. So the process was really, is really smooth now and way better. That's why we don't really miss fights ever now because we just know what to look for, Greek specifically and me. Just know when a fight's going to occur, right? Rotations, et cetera, what teams are doing. But when we first started, man, it was, it was hard. I would, really really have to, I would literally have to tap him on the shoulder. <laughs> And I would be like, bro, and I would like point at yeah. the monitor at like what was about to happen, like on the map so that he would have to then pull up the map, like zoom in. Cause like, bro, sometimes when you're, when you're trying to work like the mouse and there's like, you know, a bunch of people in one like specific yeah, yeah. area, you can't click on the exact POV that you want. It would just start like spam clicking until it was like the exact one that we needed. It was yeah. so tough. 
I'm, I'm really okay. thankful that the streamer, like the viewers, like kind of got used to that. And don't complain about that because it still does happen. I can't really fucking be perfect with only just a two man job, but um, we do a good job now. I feel like, I feel like though, people keep asking us if we want people to help us. We really don't. Like it's no shade to anyone else. It's not that we are, we're being selfish. We don't want people to be a part of the team. We do. It's just like. Man, I'm not going to lie. I'd get frustrated if, like, the person watching the spectator just missed five fights in a row. You know what I mean? It's also hard to do active casting and color commentary when someone is switching the POV for you, which is, I want to, like, take a moment and, like, I want to put this in the video, bro, because people don't really get this. We cannot do what the, the professionals do on the main broadcast. Like, what they do is hard. They don't run with the narrative. They're casting a narrative that is given to them right now and that is way fucking harder than writing your own script and going after teams that you want to they're they're watching whoever the broadcast thinks they should be watching and that is fucking difficult and while being professional they're not calling each other douchebags and flicking each other's titties and fucking dapping each other up every 20 seconds like we have that unprofessional aspect to us which is we wouldn't be able to be the professionals that that makes sense with only two people it wouldn't be possible yeah. for sure it's undisputed that the B stream has been an amazing addition to the Apex community, continuously reaching new heights every single go. Not only that, but when we look back, we can't help but realize that the B stream wouldn't be here today without the help of so many others, notably that Dizzy host all those years ago. That allowed Wig to grow his stream to the point where he was able to secure these opportunities, and the love they showed to all regions around the world participating in the ALGS helped raise the brands of players everywhere wouldn't be possible without Greek seeing the potential the B stream had and ensuring they put in the effort to reach it, pulling all of the ALGS along with them. And they make sure years later to always pass that love that was shown to them by raiding others with this massive influx of viewership that they have. Wig and Greek got a life-changing opportunity and they took it and in turn have potentially given so many others a shot at the same chance to turn their passion into something bigger. I know I personally am thankful for the positivity they push, for watching my videos on stream, and for shouting me out along with all the others they constantly show love to. When I look at the landscape of Apex, I truly believe that Nicewig, Greek, and the B-Stream as a whole is the most influential and impactful thing to emerge from this video game. Because with one single bit of love thrown their way, they've continuously thrown it back at others while making each of us have fun along the way. I know this is very random, okay, but it's really important to me. I want to say that whatever you guys are going through in your lives, take it one day at a time. You got this shit. Bad days do happen. Bad months happen. Bad years happen. But no matter what, at the end of the day, as long as you keep pushing and keep moving forward, there's always a light at the end of the darkness. I believe in you. Believe in the me that believes in you. I love you guys, man. Do not give up. Ever. All right? I love you all so much. You guys are phenomenal people. Thank you for never giving up on me, and I promise to never give up on you guys. I love you so much. You guys are great.